Okay, so here's a beautiful picture of the d orbitals. There's five of them again, the dxy, the dyz, the dxz, the dx squared minus y squared, and the dz squared. Here they're drawn beautifully, so the x-axis is always pointing the same way, the y-axis is always the same way, and the z-axis. I can't draw that beautiful, so I just draw it in the way that is possible for me. Okay? So, uh, make sure that you can draw it. These are what they actually, more actually look like. Now, why do we need to know this stuff? Well, we want to understand uh, bonding. Uh, in complex ions. And we use a theory, a bonding theory, that's abbreviated CFT. That stands for crystal field theory. Um, we've learned other bonding theories before. For example, Lewis. When you draw Lewis structure, that's a bonding theory. Vesper. VSCPR, that's a bonding theory. Uh, metal, there's metallic bonding theory, which we didn't really go over before. There's molecular orbital bonding theory. Those are all bonding theories. This one is a cousin, a close cousin of molecular orbital theory, but quite a bit easier. This is kind of a shorthand version of MO theory. So let me show you how this works. The basic idea behind it is uh, let's say it is, has to do with what's called electrostatics. That means, let's say we have two orbitals. Those two orbitals repel each other because those orbitals have electrons in them. And electrons don't want to be close to each other, so there's some repulsion. So the main concept, I'll say it like this, Orbitals next to, next to each other is bad. Whenever something is bad, that's high energy. So repulsion equals high energy. High energy is bad for bonding. Bonding likes low energy. So low energy is always better for bonding. High energy is bad for bonding. That is the main concept. So now what we're going to do is try this for some different shapes, Vesper shapes of metals. The most common that we have seen is the octahedral shape. Octahedral. That's the shape that lies on the x, y, z axis. So you've got a metal in the middle, and you've got like the x the y, and the z-axis like that. Now, in order to apply this theory, what we do in the ligands, there are six ligands and they lie on each one of these axes. So what we're going to imagine, and I'll draw the ligands in a different color, imagine all the ligands flying in towards the metal. So they're coming in, they say, hey, we're ready to bond, we're ready to make an octahedral complex. We're flying in. So imagine all six of these come in here, ready to bond with the metal. We want, what we're going to do is look at all the 5D orbitals, see which ones give us high energy repulsion, and see which ones give us lower energy. Okay? And we're going to make a little picture out of that. Let me show you what I mean. Okay. To do this, you might want to refer in your notes to those d orbitals uh, if they're not in your mind already. Okay, so we'll go to this next page here. So typically, for your metal, let's see a little energy diagram. For your metal, you know there's five d orbitals. These are the d orbitals. They're all at pretty much the same energy before the ligands come in. When the ligands come in, some will go to lower energy, some will go to higher energy. Okay, now if you imagine your 5D orbitals, if the ligands are coming in on the axis, take a look at the picture of your D orbitals on your notes and try to imagine which D orbitals will the ligands bump into first. 
So if you look at your d orbitals, if the ligands are coming in on the axis, you want to think which d orbitals are they going to bump into first? Well, if they're coming in on the axis, they're probably going to bump into the two d orbitals that are on axis. Does that kind of make sense? So they're not going to bump into these three as much because these three are not on axis. Okay? So these two on the right hand side are going to give a higher energy repulsion because when the ligand comes in, say on the x axis, it's going to bump right into this thing. And that's high energy, that's repulsion, uh, and that's not as preferred. These three will give low energies. So what's going to happen in our little picture over here? We're going to have dot 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 as the ligands come in. Three d orbitals will be low energy, and those will be the dxy, the dyz, and the dxz. And two of them will be high energy. And that'll be the dx squared minus y squared and the dz squared. Again, why is that going to happen? Because the three at the bottom are off axis. So there's not going to be very much repulsion, so it's going to be low energy. The two at the top, the dx squared minus y squared and the dz squared are on axis d orbitals. And so when the ligands come in, they're going to bump into those orbitals, and that's a repulsion, and that's high energy. Okay. This is called uh, the crystal field theory diagram, okay? And this is crystal field theory right here. So it kind of looks like an MO diagram a little bit. This distance between the uppermost d orbitals and the lowermost d orbitals is, is an energy difference. And in this um, topic, this area, that's called delta. Delta is the difference between the uppermost and the lowermost. It's the energy difference. So you can have higher energy or lower energy. Duck. Duck. Okay. It'll come back. And uh, one, one more thing I was going to say is that it doesn't matter what order you list these three G orbitals here at the bottom because they're all the same energy. So I happen to put the dxy first. I could have put the dyz first. Same thing up here. Doesn't matter that I did listed the dx squared minus y squared first. These can come in any order as long as they're at the higher energy. 